G'day viewers, um, as if any of you have seen my last video, you would know that this box was full of CD readers and I finally finished. Um, I'm going to give you a recap of what they look like, the different types that I found. Start with this little one here, it's a little flat one. It's got some nice gold in there, it's only a little bit but it's alright. Uh, the next smallest would be these ones here and uh, I was cutting the little metal bit off the back and ending up with a nice clean diode. The next one would be probably this one here which is a bit bigger than the other ones, it's quite nice. I was excited to see those. Then there was these here which is, that's the socket and this fits into the socket so together it was quite a nice size I'm trying to get it in there one handed it was uh, it's quite nice then I found this one here and I was surprised with that, that's a beauty that's a big one unfortunately there was only the one but then there was these ones here a rectangular sort of oval shaped sort of thing and uh, it's quite nice that one and I'll show you what it looks like on here there's two on there so I know they're pretty good I would have liked a lot more of those but there was quite a few there was I don't know probably half a dozen or maybe more this is what we've ended up with. Quite a nice pile. It feels like somewhere between 100 grams and 200 grams. Maybe more. I doubt it though. I'd say probably, probably pushing 200 grams. I'll weigh it anyway. I just wanted to give you a look at what we got. Um, so now I'll weigh it and then we'll go and process them. Um, before I go, I uh, just want to say a couple of things before we continue. Now, one of my viewers was confused because I threw away in the last video a plug that contained some very slight gold plated pins and rightfully so for him to be confused because I often say gold is gold, it all adds up. The gold that was on those pins was so minimal not only was there hardly any coating on the pins, but it was a very thin coating. It was like just a hint of gold. Now, my issue with that would have been it would cost more in acid to get the gold than what it was worth. And even if you were to use AP, which is for those who are new, acid mixed peroxide, the gold foils that would have come off would have been so minute that you probably wouldn't have even seen them. The only way you would have caught them is in a, fil a filter. So it basically just was not worth keeping. Uh, it's not like me to throw away anything gold, but when they're so minimal like that, I should have pulled one out to show you, but just please take my word for it. They were so minute, the, the coating was next to nothing. The other thing is, right now it's New Year's Eve. I know that by the time this video has been posted it would definitely be next year but I would like to just say that I hope everyone's had a really good Christmas and I wish everyone a really good night tonight, a happy new year safe and prosperous hope no one gets in trouble or gets hurt or anything like that, I hope everyone has a really good night, whatever you're doing, even if you're sitting at home watching movies, I just hope you have a good night but uh probably doesn't say much, mean much saying it now since it'll be New Year's by the time I post it, but I should have said it in my last video. Alright, so let's weigh this and then continue on. Another thing that I found on each of the readers are these little flat sections. Some of them look like they're just silver. They may not actually be silver, but they look like they're silver. Some of them clearly have gold in them. So, they, to, it's hard to tell with my eyesight failing, but they look to me like they're glazed 
like laminated, covered in glass, or something, I don't know, they're just, they look to me like they're covered with something. So, what I've done is I've just mixed them in with all my IC chips. And just treat them all the same as I do with the IC chips. You burn the whole lot, crush them all, and treat them that way. I would have liked to treat them along with these, but it doesn't matter. These are the main thing I was after anyway. If we were after the full amount of gold from each reader, then I would have had to include those other things as well as any pins that were on there. Um, someone asked me about the pins, was I going to treat them in the same batch as this? Uh, no, because I've got um, a container, which I'll show you. I showed you before, but I'll show you again. This big bucket here is full of all things gold from when I've been scrapping. I've just been adding it to this container, and this container will be treated on its own. There's pins in there, there's bits of board, there's bits of fingers, there's all kinds of things in there that are gold so that's where I'll be doing the pins so the video now will just be the readers only and when I say readers I mean the diodes the laser diodes all right so I think I got carried away when I was hoping for about 200 grams because I must have been I must have had a sore wrist or something from scrapping because it now I've had a break and it feels like it's probably not even a hundred grams or if it is it's close to alright so we'll see, I'm going to turn this on we'll see what this comes up as yeah nearly 75 grams I thought so I don't know where I got 200 grams from you know, when you've been scrapping for hours and then you, your wrist gets tired. So, I don't know what the yield rate is on these. I do for ceramics, I do IC chips, BGA chips, gold corner BGA chips, all that type of thing. But not for these. And uh, I'm hoping that there's some people out there that are good at math who can use this sample to get an average yield so I'm guessing if you times this by I don't know 12, 13 whatever it is it'll give you what a, a kilo would, would yield if any of you guys are good at math and you can figure out even a halfway decent estimate can you let us all know but uh, now we know what we're dealing with it's time to go and put it on acid Uh, because these have got little bits of solder on them, where the uh, bits of board, ribbon cable are stuck to, I'm going to soak these in hydrochloric acid. I would normally boil it, but today is going to be 40 degrees, which is about 100, 105, 110 Fahrenheit. I'm not going to need to boil it. I'm just going to let it sit all day and, and it'll just, it'll soon work. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of water in just to cover it. And then hydrochloric acid. I'll put a generous amount in case any of it evaporates today in the heat. And that should uh, work away at all the solder anything else and we'll just let that sit and then when that's done I'll pour it off and give it a really good rinse and I mean really good because I need to get rid of every little bit of hydrochloric acid the next step will be a nitric bath to remove all base metals now I know that a lot of you guys can't get hold of nitric acid or it's way too expensive so in this situation, all you have to do is soak it in AP. And for those of you who are new and don't know what that is, 
it's a mixture of hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide and you'd need to sit for well over a week but this is the short way it'll be ready for rinsing tomorrow and I'll be back when that's ready to go alright so it's the next day it's been sitting in a dilute hydrochloric acid all this time now I'm going to pour that off and rinse it really well probably about seven or eight times uh, I can use tap water because I'm not expecting there to be any silver so I can just continuously rinse it until I'm sure that all the hydrochloric acid is out alright I've rinsed it seven times and uh, I'm pretty sure now that there's no more hydrochloric acid residue in there I'm going to add some nitric acid now to uh, eat up any of the base metals I'll put that in a, on, in a catch pan just in case it overflows and I'll come back tomorrow okay so when I've seen this happen I was happy to come out and start recording because I've had a lot of people ask me what's going on I've got this brown goo if you see this don't panic it's just rust okay so nitric acid is an oxidizer there was obviously some steel in there the steel being decomposed when steel decomposes it rusts that's all that is and you don't have to worry about doing anything to it because as rust is a decomposing metal it can still dissolve in nitric acid so all you need to do is keep adding nitric acid and it will consume the rust while it's also consuming other things base metals and so on if you just keep adding it eventually it'll clear up it'll become back to the normal color liquid that it was and uh, you can carry on so I hope this is uh, a good thing for those of you who have had it to see there's nothing to worry about this happens with doing pins it happens with doing all kinds of things it's got steel in there so just keep adding nitric that's all you're going to do and you can see the rust has gone this is the next day and uh, the gold foils are starting to float not sure if it's all completely finished or not the only way to find that out is to put some more nitric acid in there so it's gone back to green again just uh, make sure that the new nitric gets all through the system can't see any reaction might be just some bubbles from stirring it up but that's it, it's going to be 40 degrees today which is actually in my area it'll be about 42 so it's a, I don't know, 110 Fahrenheit something like that. so I won't even need to put it on the heat the reaction has stopped so now I'm going to filter it and catch all the gold flakes so that I can rinse them off and then dissolve them yeah, would you? okay guys it's been nearly two weeks since I last filmed it's just so ridiculously hot I hate summer uh, six o'clock and it's already 34 degrees Celsius which I think is somewhere around 90 95 Fahrenheit so what I've done I finally had all the solution filtered I've put the filter into this small beaker I rinsed the filter out with a squirt of water because some of the fil filter had baked onto the the funnel now I'm going to put some hydrochloric acid in there um, before I continue I want to let you know that going back a few videos ago you would have seen where I took my GoPro 7 back to the place I bought it from because I had issues with it and they told me that they were going to upgrade it to an 8 
and I thought they had upgraded to an eight. And then I since realized it was actually a five. I went back to the store with the camera and I said, look, I don't understand what's going on, but you know, it was supposed to be an eight and this is a five. And the good old Josh, the guy that's been helping me, he's so apologetic. He said, I don't know how this happened. And he swapped for an eight. Now I definitely have a GoPro Black Hero eight. It even says it on the side of the camera. I'm using it now. So all the footage from this point forward will be with the new 8. And I'm also making another video at the time, at the same time, and that's also going to be from this point forward filmed with the 8. So if you guys could tell me, is there any difference in the footage from now and what it was before, I'd really appreciate it. Now with this gold, I'm not expecting a lot because we didn't start with very much. We had a tiny little sample. So I'm just going to put the tiniest bit of nitric in. I was actually going to put like half a pipette, but I can't find them. A couple of drops is all I need. And I'm just going to let that sit. There's definitely no need to put it on heat. Give it a bit of a stir. And I don't know when I'll come out next maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, maybe next week. Tomorrow is supposed to be a fairly cool day. So uh, I'm hoping it'll be a cool day. This should be well and truly all dissolved by then. What I'll do is I'll come out this, um, tonight when it's a bit cooler and do a, a status test. And I'll put just a tiny bit more nitric in to see if there's any reaction. See if I need more nitric or not. I shouldn't imagine I would. It's such a small sample to start with. Um, but I'll let you know anyway what else, what, what I do next. And uh, hopefully we get some gold and need to finish this video. I know you guys are probably hanging to hear from me, you haven't, haven't heard from me in a while. I really apologize and I'm, yes, I'm a silk, I don't like the heat. But I'm trying as hard as I can to get videos done for you. So I'll come back when I do the next step. Now I've had to rehydrate this with some hydrochloric acid uh, because it got really low with evaporation with the heat we're having here. And when I stir it, I can feel debris down the bottom. But I don't think that's laser diodes. If it is, it might be just some of the steel. Uh, I know that there's going to be bits of ribbon cable because they all have a little bit of ribbon cable stuck on them. But uh, now it's time to filter it. I'm going to filter set up. I may need to filter it twice. If I can get it nice and clear the first time, I won't. But if I don't, then I have to go twice. Um, we can drop the gold. We've got a nice clean beaker, which is important. So uh, I'll get this filtered and we'll be back ready to drop the gold. Alright, it's all filtered through. Uh, it's a tiny bit cloudy, but this is going to be refined a few times. That's uh, clear enough for the first time. I've got a few more videos that I'm going to be doing with this gold and it's going to be refined and refined and refined so that'll be fine. I've got some sodium metabisulfite uh, dissolving in water. It's gone all clumpy so I've been crushing it up and that's why it looks like it's so cloudy because there's so much of it in there. Well, the whole container I had full even though it had a lid on it has gone all clumpy not going to matter it's just a bit hard to dissolve so now basically when you when you drop gold you want to dilute the solution by double so that means I've got that much solution I want to double it you can either add water and then add dry SMB or just dissolve SMB in water and it does the same thing dissolve dilutes it at the same time so I'll pour it in.
and now it's just a waiting game. I don't expect it to be a very strong or a very uh, a large amount of gold, which is why it's taking so long. If you've got a lot of gold, it goes brown real quick. A small amount, it takes its time. So I'll come back in an hour or so, and that should be nice and brown and gold settled at the bottom. It might even be clear with gold at the bottom, which would be even better. It's only been three and a half hours since I put the SMB in and it's already looking like it's settling down quite well. You can see some gold on the bottom. Don't know how much it's going to be yet. So what I'm going to do is pour this off into my refining waste container. I'll show you that in a second. This is my refining waste uh, container. I'm going to pour this into there and then start my wash process. Any gold that may travel across, which would be really fine particles, won't go to waste because they'll collect in the bottom of this vessel and I'll be able to recover them from there. So now, I'm going to go through my wash process. Everybody has their opinion on how best to wash gold, but I've proven the way I do it, that I get a result of 999.99% pure. So, you've seen it before on other videos. I'll give you a quick rundown. I'm going to do three hot water rinses and then I'm going to boil it in hydrochloric acid for an hour or so and then do three more hot water rinses to get rid of the hydrochloric acid and what I should be left up with is some pretty good gold although it hasn't been refined yet but you do this wash process through each refine it gets better and better and better so I'll do the wash um, repeat washes now I'll come back when I'm boiling it all right, so it's had three water washes. I've now got hydrochloric acid in there and it's just been put on heat, so it'll start boiling soon. The only little bit of gold that went into here was a very minute amount of colloidal gold, which is ultra small particles that are floating in suspension. It would have been barely enough to register on the scales. So it shouldn't affect the outcome yield. Although there is only a tiny bit in there, but don't forget we started with a small amount to begin with. So I'm not expecting a whole lot. So, but anything we get, just uh, multiply it until you get to a kilo amount, and that'll tell you how much per kilo these things yield. So I'll just let that boil for an hour or so, and come back and do three more water washes. Then I can start drying it. Now there's the gold all dried, well not dried, but I've poured the solution off and now I've got to dry it out. And the best way i found is when I've tried doing it in beakers before, it always sticks to the beaker and it's hard to get out. So the best way i found to do it is to make a little paper cup, which I've got here. Um, it's baking paper or as Americans call it parchment paper. I just made a little cup of it and I put the gold into that and then I normally put it, so what I would do is I'd have a beaker on the hot plate with a lid on top and then I'd sit this on the lid and the beaker boiling with solution or water or whatever makes the plate hot and it's just enough to dry this out. Um, and I put a beaker over the top of this upside down so it can't blow away but it's a stinking hot day as I've been saying it's really hot here so what I'm going to do I need two hands I'm going to pour the gold into here I'll take it out in the middle of the sun I'll put a plate down first and I'll put this on it and put a beaker over the top of it and let the sun dry it so I'll do this now I just need two hands to get the gold into there 
Uh, some water in there from where I squirted it out of the beaker and into the paper cup and I tried picking the water out with a pipette but there's a lot of little bits of gold in, in, in suspension it's very fine very fine gold so I'm just going to leave it like that it will evaporate in no time so I'm going to put this little beaker over the top that way the wind can't blow it away and I'm going to take it out into the sun there we go Beautiful day, hot day, should dry in no time. So there's one thing we need to take into account with the almost 75 grams that I had um, started with, is some of those were little laser diodes and some of them, most of them, quite a lot of them, were these little square things which I can't really get a good close up on with the GoPro but if you look at these under a microscope or even a jeweler's loop you'll discover that there's a whole pile of gold bond wires in there so I don't know how many legs are coming off each side I think four or five something like that so that means there's roughly about eight gold bond wires and they're solid gold not plated on each one of these and there was quite a few Let's see if we can get this in the light might be able to get a good, better picture of it these little square things so there's gold bond wires in there that's going to affect the outcome when you when you're trying to work out what the yield should be so it's not just a matter of 75 grams of gold plated lenses it's also got these things with the gold bond wires so it's going to throw out the ability really to get a good yield rate and then also there's all kinds of things in there from steel to copper, brass, all kinds of base metals. Now, before I weigh up the gold, you've got to remember that this is the first drop. It hasn't been refined at all. It's only been dropped with SMB, which is known to bring down other things like copper and so on. So, whatever the scales read, could quite possibly be wrong it could have copper in there other base metals and also as I said the, the gold tally might be higher because of these gold bond wires so I just want you to take that into account okay now I will be using this amount of gold in other videos coming up um, I will be refining it probably two or three times so if you keep watching future videos you'll eventually see once i've refined it a few times what the yield is without any base metals in there that might give you a better idea of what we come up with so i just wanted you to take that into account all right so now we'll get to weighing the gold well good news finally got the gold ready it was that hot that the paper has gone brittle and broken. Can't believe it. This is wax paper, so having that bit of water on there initially wouldn't have made any difference. But the paper's just gone brittle. So I need to get a little brush. A little brush here. I need to brush it out and get as much as I can. And. I can't find my little white dish, I think my granddaughter's moved it. Uh, I'm going to find something to weigh it in and I'll be back. Okay, so i am hopefully got the light on there. Um, turn it on. Put my glasses on so I can see. Now there's not a lot in there, but as we, as we said, there's only going to be a small sample because when you started with, what, 75 grams or something. Before I do that, the paper is stained brown, but I've brushed off whatever I could. Anything that's on there would not even be enough to measure 
However, that will go in my paper storage. I won't waste that. So, let's see what we got. It was all clumped up nicely. There's nothing left in here. 0.63 of a gram. So, I'm not the best at math. Let's see if my girlfriend can get the calculator up. 1,000 grams divided by 75. Seventy-five. 13.33333. So, if you times sixty-one or point six one by thirteen point three 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 three, that'll give you a rough estimate of what you'd expect from a kilo of those laser diodes. But like I said before, take into account there could be lots of contaminants in there. It hasn't been refined, it's just its first drop. So that's it. I'm so glad I finally got this finished. This video has taken me well in excess of between four and six weeks, maybe even longer. And I'm so glad it's done. So to all of those who have been watching, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And there was one thing I wanted to mention. Maybe you guys can tell me where I'm going wrong, but most of the other YouTubers have got tens of thousands of subscribers. I know one's even just gone over 100, uh, 200,000 subscribers, while I'm left with just over 1,000. Something has happened, I'm doing something wrong. Um, I was getting randoms coming by my channel, and that stopped. The only viewers I get each time I put a video are my, my loyal viewers, you guys. But there's no new people viewing. There's no randoms coming by. Um, I've got my normal normal band of followers that are watching my each video I put out, and that's it. And then for as long as it takes to put another video out, I get no views, no comments. So I'm doing something wrong. I'm not attracting new people. Um... I really need my name out there. I've got advertising on my car, wherever I drive around, people see it. Uh, I don't know what more I can do. Is there something wrong with my videos? Uh, are, are they not enjoyable to watch? Um, there's a reason why people aren't spreading the word and spreading my name, and I don't know what that is. So I'd like your feedback, please. If you could tell me what would improve my videos, why people aren't spreading the name, why I'm not getting new I haven't had a new subscriber in I don't know how long so uh, thanks for watching and I will have a silver video coming out very soon and I'm also going to be doing more videos with this gold very very soon at least I'll be starting them soon whether or not I get them finished soon is another thing but please be patient I'm doing the best I can to have videos out for you alright bye for now